Hey, everybody, and welcome to Super Comic Fun Times Daily Comics Vlog. Today, I'm going to review for you Justice League of America number 54 from uh, 1967, June to be more exact. And uh, before we get started, let's talk about a little bit of news. I have some really exciting news, but first, I'm just uh, going to go over a few things. I'm going to give you an update. I can't remember. Um, let's see. So like, I think I talked yesterday about the Jawbreakers Lost Soul book. And so right now that, um, that Indiegogo is, has raised $121,599. Way to go, Zach, John Malin and Ethan Van Skyver. Uh, who are all involved with it. I don't know who else is involved with it, and I'm sorry if I, I, I'm leaving you out. So um, this is very exciting. It's backed by 3,413 people so far, and I've included a link uh, down in the description. And there are eight days left if you want to uh, get in on this, jump on the bandwagon, so to speak. I jumped in relatively late. But at the same time, I was uh, always intending to. It was, it's sort of like... Um, Christmas time when you just uh, come home from Christmas and you've just had this wonderful feeling with your family exchanging presents and stuff and somebody comes up to you and asks you for money on the street and you know they're probably a scam artist but you don't think about it because you're just in the giving mood. Okay, that's bad. I don't think these people are scam artists. I just think it's just like after going to see a comic book movie, I want to support comic books. After having a w wonderful time with my family at Christmas, I want to support other people. Even if uh, like normally I would think they see, there I go. I keep, let, you know, just support this. It's, it's good. I keep going negative. I hate that. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, the other thing I was going to look at was the box office, and I had a link here someplace. I was going to look at the box office for um, Avengers Infinity War, and um, that was somewhere around $258 million. Here we go. Uh, so, yes, $258 million million it made its opening weekend, and I think it made uh, – close to 600 million worldwide so that's very exciting i really enjoy this movie i'd like to see it again there are a couple of videos out today if you don't follow uh nerd sync and wisecrack um nerd sync uh they, they both uh nerd sync and wisecrack both put out videos on the philosophy of the uh infinity war well they're, they're, but they're not quite the same um, Wisecrack uses their philosophy to try to predict how the uh, next Avengers movie will end, you know, how Thanos will lose or give up power or whatever. And, you know, um, it was interesting, but I think basically they come to the same conclusion that happens in the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, but it was a good video, so you should probably check that one out. And then um, NerdSync did a really good one, and it was just about the philosophy of Thanos himself. And, you know, um, that one was just um, excellent. It, it kind of talked about uh, how you say nihilism and what that means. And it focused more on Thanos from the comic books than uh, from the movie. Uh, very interesting show. Uh, check that out, too. Maybe I'll put links down below. Uh, I should definitely do that. So um, the whole thing is, it's like, you know, just like I got into like that verbal wrestling with myself a few minutes ago. I, as soon as I finish a, a, a product, I just feel like, oh, that was so great. And then I just like walk away for a little while. So I have to, you know, I, I set up all my links and my, uh, whatever they call that thing, that box down below where I write in uh, what the show is about. So. The next thing is there's something very exciting, and whoops, what happened there? Okay, you didn't see that, but I did. So I am going to uh, screen share, and let me see here. Uh, I just happened to look at my mail before I started, and um, I found out that the House of Mystery Omnibus edition is back on. Originally, this was advertised on Amazon last May, at least I originally purchased it, purchased a version of it in May uh, 2017, May 25th, 
And then I checked my email today, and you know, we're talking about Superman 1000, and I still haven't got that. And I'm supporting my local comic shop, so I'm waiting for them to get a reorder on that. Uh, but while I was going through, I saw, oh my God, this is back. So the uh, this is coming out on uh, July 18th. You can see that I I did purchase, I, I pre-ordered this, and I you know I love these horror comics from DC. What can I say? So I you know I don't even know why I screenshot because there isn't really much here. Now one thing I can say is this cover here is not going to be the cover. Uh, you can see this is from Showcase. They just don't have the cover yet, uh, and as soon as DC or their publisher sends the uh, uh, cover to Amazon, they'll put it up. So this is like a mock cover. For the longest time, they had the Swamp Thing issue cover for uh, House of Secrets. Uh, and so I'm just excited. I love these comic books. I wish it was coming out like a couple of months earlier in October, uh, so it would be in time for Halloween. But it's coming out in January 8th, and maybe I will I'll be at least I have the House of Secrets that I can use for my Halloween shows this year. So excited! Um, I just did thumbs up, even though I'm screen sharing. So let me go back and unscreen share. Okay, there we are, and we are back. So I'm joining a nice uh, IPA. There are two kinds of people in the world: people who enjoy IPAs and people who have no idea how anybody can enjoy an IPA. So this book, you know, for 1967, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I've had my ups and downs with uh, characters in the Justice League from the 80s and whatnot. I've never gone back this far. This book was pretty awesome. And it starts with this cover here. You see this? Now, the thing about this book, my copy of it, you remember I unpacked it from one of those Amazon things, I think it was the Mr. Miracle pack. And um, I think I showed you then that it had some rusty staples. And it turns out when I opened it up, the cover is just detached. And it looks like, I don't know if this will show up on the camera. Um, let's see. Yeah, you see that there's like some oil around the staple. So it's almost like somebody put some oil to try to... Maybe they, I don't know what they were trying to do. It doesn't make sense to me because if you put oil on a rusty staple, it's going to soak into the paper. Anyways, that's what they did. Um, excuse me. It did not detract from my enjoyment of this comic book. This comic book was in rough shape anyways. The, uh, the edges are very much worn. And, you know, whoever tried to, I don't know, this is, I don't really know anything about comic book collecting anymore. When I was a kid, I collected them. And I guess I'm doing the same thing now. It's just, I buy comic books and I put them in a box or something and they they collect. They, you know, pretty much they collect themselves. So I don't know, and I'm never like until recently, I think I was watching a couple of months ago, Ethan Van Skyver might have been talking about ironing. Somebody was talking about where you iron. Oh, it was probably Comic Conspiracy, which is a good podcast. I look forward to listening to their show tomorrow. Usually it comes out Wednesday mornings. It's the same as Yoga Day and the same as New Comic Book Day. It's like Comic Conspiracy is a shop in San Francisco, I think someplace in California at any rate. And every Wednesday, uh, for the most part, they have a podcast and it's pretty fun. Uh, so they might have been talking about ironing comic books. I can't remember. It could have been an interview with Ethan. It could have been like double sources. I don't know. I've just, I've never heard of it until like, you know, within the last couple of months. So this cover, like I say, is pretty awesome. Um, it shows the Justice League and Total Defeat. And um, it's got like really cool ads. So 67, you know, the space program was going strong. When this full-size Gemini spacecraft, could you imagine? That would be awesome. <laughs> That's another reason I need a time machine. So it's like they had 630 prizes total and 29 second prizes. So Vox Guitars are winners, ask the Beatles. So like um, this is Reveille's Gemini sweepstakes. The first prize was a Gemini spacecraft. And so I guess this was a guitar company? I don't know. But, um, oh, and it was uh, May 15th, 1967. So that doesn't make, well, that's because um, this comic book would have come out probably in May. I don't know how long comic books were out. I, I do remember something about June was when uh, 
at the end of June would be when the retailers would take the comic books off the shelf. Uh, so it was probably out in May. And so you had until May 15th, 1967. So if you got your time machine, you might want to remember this date if you want to try to win this Gemini. I wonder who won. I wonder if there's a way to find that out. I mean, that would just be so cool. I was alive back then, but I was like two. So there'd be no way I'd be entering it. Now I just noticed here is like somebody had used to test a pen. So there's even more damage, but that's okay. So this book um, is by, the story is by Gardner Fox. He's somebody I've never heard of. And art is by Mike Sekowski and Sid Green. And those names might be familiar from the books, but uh, so in this book, we don't have Superman. Um, they're only crediting Batman, The Flash, Wonder Woman, The Atom, and Martian Manhunter. And then here on this side, we have, they, they list Alexander the Great. They list Serpent Man. So that's Serpent Man. Uh, Queen Elizabeth. Um, this is Judge, Judge Duffy. I don't know if he's a historical figure. And this is Sir Lancelot. So this book has a lot going on. And even though they don't list the Green Lantern, there's a reason for that. It's sort of like if this were a soap opera, he's kind of the guy in the coma for most of it. It starts with um, Hell Jordan showing up at this uh, book sh bookstore. Um, it's a bookstore in a bookstore of Cape City, USA, Semper Lieber. You've given me the correct password. So the mailing tube is yours. And so this is Held Jordan here. And here's the bookstore owner. And he goes outside and he's waiting to meet this woman and they talk about it. And then like somebody hits him over the head with a blackjack. I think that's what that's called. And the woman he's supposed to meet just shows up. And I guess she calls the police. Then the flash hears on the radio that um, Hell Jordan has been, and this is uh, Barry, Barry Lyndon, no, Barry, uh, Barry Allen. Uh, yeah, because this is back in the 60s, way before crisis. Yeah, this is like almost exactly 20 years before crisis, I guess. Um, so he hears that uh, Barry, uh, uh, that, um, let's see, uh, Barry Allen, um, why can't I remember his name anymore? I just said his name, Hell Jordan. So he hears, a man named Hell Jordan has been attacked and is in critical condition in the hospital. He goes to visit him, and then he finds out that uh, Hell Jordan witnessed a car crash, and this guy is dying, and he tells him, well, my daughter will know what to do, but you have to go, and Semper Lieber is the password. You go pick this book. I don't know why he just trusts this guy, but he does. Uh, <clears throat> oh, this is cool. Nothing, there's so many cool ads in this book. I spent almost as much time on the ads as I did the story. So I had this, I got it secondhand from my cousin. It's like, you know, GI Joes back then, they kind of like had this little hair around them. Like, you know, kids in the eighties got way more of a, a variety of GI Joes than we had access to when I was a kid. But I did have this Frogman thing and you know, you just kind of snap GI Joe into it and you could pretend he was diving and so i think i had my own gi joe doll and then like when my cousin grew out of the other toys uh they sent uh they sent us those other toys and so that was kind of cool good way to save money so like here we have all of the superheroes coming together because you know one of their own is in trouble martian manhunter the atom is coming out of the phone uh, Diana's invisible plane and Batman's robotic plane, I guess they say it is. Okay, so they um, they go and uh, I think they're trying to catch up with the daughter of the guy who died. And um, so the first thing is the Flash and Batman are attacked by Sir Lancelot and um, was it the Lizard Man? Sir Lancelot. Oh yeah, so like, yeah, right here. It's Alexander the Great and Sir Lancelot. They find the daughter of the dude. I kind of skipped a page, that's why I was confused. And then um, Flash gets hypnotized by something Alexander the Great has. And then Sir Lancelot has this kind of arrow weapon that just kind of like, 
you know, twirls arrows around. And um, that's how Batman and uh, and the Flash are, are nearly defeated. But they have enough that they kind of chase him away. And uh, they're able to save the girl. And then, then we come to the uh, Flash and... Uh, uh, yeah, there's like this one line where Master Man only goes, we'll stay here in case anybody shows up. And so like these two guys dressed as doctors turn out to be Lizard Man and Judge Duffy. And the judge has an interesting power. This reminds me of, um, I think it was Crisis on Earth 1 or Crisis on Earth 2 where they kind of, ha he has this um, book and he just, it's a book of, well, first of all, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself, is first of all, Adam takes on the Lizard Man, and then, um, then what does it say? Elements of law is what the judge is reading. So he, like, uh, says water, and it causes a flood to come and uh, nearly drown Martian Manhunter. Luckily, water isn't his uh, weakness. And then Earth, and then, like, you know, a bunch of sand and rocks get uh, thrown there. At the same time, um, the Adam is getting blown around and then um it comes he comes up to fire and of course fire is martian manhunter's weakness and i i think that is a dumb weakness because you know there's like in uh, i don't you know um earlier i mentioned i didn't know too much about him my favorite story of martian manhunter so far is that six or eight page story <coughs> excuse me at the end of the <coughs> The JLA uh, 89 Annual, I think that is just an excellent story, and it tells me so much more about Martian Manhunter than a lot of the stories. So, like, you know, fire is his mortal enemy, and in uh, Injustice, he gets killed right away because Superman just fries him with his eyes. And I, you know, they retconned um, uh, the Green Lanterns being powerless in front of Yellow, and I think that was good to get rid of that. I think it would be good to either modify. Uh, Martian Manhunter's weakness to fire or something with it because to me it doesn't make any sense. How do you get away from fire? You know, if fire was like when Superman, his um, weakness is kryptonite. Kryptonite is relatively rare. If a villain or a Batman want to get a bit of kryptonite, they have to work at it. Anybody can strike a match and defeat Martian Manhunter pretty much. So I. Uh, you know, and I guess he's got mind reading skills, but how helpful is that? It's not helping him here. So then the Adam somehow gets away from the lizard and he comes and he fights the uh, the judge. And as soon as the book closes, the threat of fire vanishes. And so, um, <coughs> so yeah, here the lizard kind of sh uh, sheds its skin. It was kind of interesting because I was thinking about that uh, in regards to myself today, you know, uh, the aspects I was thinking in terms of psychology, like you know, with all of my books from Parker or whatnot, I was like thinking the uh, the parts of myself that don't work just shed like the, the the skin and move on to success. It was something like that. So it was interesting when this lizard guy sheds his skin to get away. So then we have well, Wonder Woman next, and she comes in, and there's uh, Queen Elizabeth is hypnotizing this guy with a flower. Hypnotism really worked well in the 60s. So did knockout gas. I don't know why that went away. I remember one of my favorite TV shows, and I wasn't watching it in the 60s. I watched it mostly in repeats growing up. But um, they always had knockout gas in the wild, wild west. So what happens here is like, um, you know, Wonder Woman comes. Uh, Great Hera, that woman's dressed like Queen Elizabeth I, waving a flower under the nose of Dr. Rockwell. And uh, I sent you to fetch the Marley girl, hoping she could interpret them. I went with the judge and grabbed Hal Jordan. So, like, they're kind of explaining their failures now. But then it turns out, like, you know, they decostume and they're like this, uh, what is it called? The Royal Flush Gang. This is the first time I've ever read about this group. But apparently they had uh, another one in uh, issue 43. So close to a year before, a little more than a year before. No, about a year before this story, the, uh, the Royal Flush Gang was there again. So like what I really like about this story is it turns out that, that 
the, the doctor, the map that he had was a map to this hidden treasure of all of the lost libraries. And it also had, had all the scrolls and texts. So some weapons that were said to be able to, you know, if anybody possessed these weapons, they would be able to uh, control the earth. So the whole problem is um, uh, what happens? They didn't see the map. I'm not sure. There was like, they couldn't interpret the map. They had to find somebody who could, you know, read Sumerian or whatever. Uh, Minoan, it's like, um, here we got uh, Martian Manhunter kind of explaining things. And it goes, uh, there it is. But what cryptic writing is on it? Why, that's the ancient Minoan language. Whoever drew the map must have had, must have been a marvelous scholar. What does it say? Can you translate? And then here we go. I'll go ahead and read this to you because this is important for the plot. As best I can make out, it says to take care with the sealed off volumes of forgotten lore. If they are exposed to air, the ancient books will. And then I guess the word would be crumble. Oh, my. If the Royal Flush Gang doesn't know about this, they'll ruin the priceless scrolls. And so, like, they're breaking into the thing, and all the scrolls are there, and they go, yes, the power of the weapons are there. And then, like, the Justice League just happens to show up, and, you know. Here they come running really quick. But the tomb's already open, so I don't know. I don't know why the, the scrolls aren't crumbling already. But then, like, um, the weapons are the Mirror of Archimedes, which was said to, like, be able to oh, – sorry. Uh, was said to be able to uh, melt ships. And then you had the uh, the horn of Joshua, which you know uh, Jericho. They play, they played the horns. And, you know they pretty much just used um, sound waves to crumble the walls. That they, they the the Hebrews would like uh, run around the walls of the city like seven times, and then they would bl blast these trumpets at them, which caused a kind of resonance, and the walls kind of crumbled. At least that's the theory. And then the magical tripod which helped the Delphic Oracle make her prophecy. So those are the three weapons, the three physical things and everything else is scrolls. And then like, you know, they use the weapons against the Justice League, but the Justice League overcome. And um, what happens to, ten, you know, they got some kind of lame jokes in here, but they're not too bad. It's like, um, this is one time when five beats 10, my knuckles over the 10 cards spots, and uh, so, yeah, they fight and, you know, they're victorious. And then, like, all of the scrolls just crumble to dust. And Batman is like, um, you know, the, the girl goes, maybe it's just as well, hell, because they go back to hell, Jordan, in the hospital. You see, I've wondered if it's right for us to take the knowledge from those old scrolls because nobody gets anything without paying a price. And Batman goes, ah, oh, you should say that, Irene. I was thinking that if we had obtained the knowledge, of the old civilizations, we might unwittingly repeat their mistakes. Perhaps something dreadful would happen, which would be our price to pay. It must be a blessing in disguise that the books were burned and the weapons were destroyed. Really, Batman? I want those, you know. And you idiots made it, you made you lost, you lost us this ancient wealth. So then, like they also talk about the weapons, and it's like they, they're kind of destroyed too, and it's like. Well, maybe we can reconstruct them in a way they uh, won't work and give them to a museum. What? What? And it's like, you know, what's the point of that? Then you might as well just have a mock-up of them. <laughs> so, but other than those little, um, you know, little nitpicks, I, uh, I enjoyed this story. It was a lot of fun for uh, 1967. Uh, Justice League story. It, it you know the, it has humor, which is important, but it's not over the top humor like you have with uh, Blue Beetle and um, Booster Gold in the eighties. Uh, I just I don't get that. I, uh, but yeah, this was a very good book. You know why the um, what are they called the Royal Flush Gang dress up as historical figures? I don't know. I suspect it's so that they can pass this off as an educational item. And that's the part I really enjoyed is like, you know, the uh, weapons and, and whatnot, the historical perspective. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, for, it was a pretty good book for, you know, if you bought this in 1967, you got your 12 cents worth. I will say that much. And so I probably paid about what, um, um, 50 books. So I probably paid about 10 cents for it. It was worth it. I wish it was in better shape, but I'm glad it's, it's still readable. It's pretty awesome. So that's going to be the show for today. Um, uh, remember links down below. I have a link to the, uh, house of mystery. If you, if you decide you want to pre-order that, uh, what I like about pre-orders is sometimes the price goes down while it's, uh, you know, the book's a while away and then you get that. And so you can always like cancel it before. Um, and, um, what else, what else to say? Oh yeah. The, the, the link to Zach is down below. And I, I know earlier in this video, I said I would put, oh yeah. Uh, I'll put, you know, some links to NerdSync and uh, Wisecrack down below, too, as soon as I finish this video. So Super Comic Fun Time, out.